Uh, good evening. Welcome on this little talk about the communication gap and if we can bridge it and if tools can help. Uh, we are this Elke Steegmans, my colleague and myself. We come from a different background. Elke has a PhD in computer science and she used to work at the Catholic University of Leuven. While I'm coming from the private sector and I have been working among others as a software tester and a J2E developer. But at the moment, we're both teaching at uh, University Colleges Leuven Limburg. Uh, we're teaching the Bachelor's uh, applied, uh, applied Information Technology. And uh, we're teaching them how to build software, but we would also like to teach them how to build software right and how to build the right software, which is not always that easy. Um, that is one of the reasons we try to introduce testing in our cur curriculum, um, so they uh, learn how to build the software right. And for the right software, we even try to bring test-driven development in the curriculum. Uh, because with test-driven development, the focus is more to preventing bugs, uh, to write better software, because you start with writing your test, we all know it. So writing your test first forces you to think about what the software is supposed to do. Then only and then you start with writing the code, you refactor, and then the process continues. Uh, we noticed it wasn't an easy thing to do to introduce this. We actually would love our students to work always this way. Each assignment starts like that. Uh, that proves to be impossible because there's no time lift. Sometimes the technical, it's, it's too technical, especially for first year students. So about, I think, three years ago, we were sitting here and we were dreaming and saying, oh, would it not be nice if we could have some tool that students could just write down the risks in plain text and then press a button, button and then the test would be generated. Uh, which was a nice dream, but we never managed to find such a tool. But still, that search brought us here. Because, of course, tool automation is important in this process of test-driven development. Typically, you start writing uh, on unit test levels, you start writing your test classes first, using tools like JUnit or Mokito or an other mocking tool. Uh, your first test classes, then your real classes, then you go to have a level higher, uh, writing integration tests. You might need other tools like DBUnit or Archelian or whatever tools for the integration. And then finally you end up in the UI user interface where you start testing like tools like Selenium and so ever. So that's typically how we do it, but the question is, is this really test-driven development? Um, because if test-driven development really is about thinking first and thinking about the requirements first, is this not too late? Shouldn't we start earlier on with this process? Shouldn't we start at the very beginning when we're sitting down with our customer, when we're talking about mockups mock and talking about what the software is supposed to do and writing the user stories? Shouldn't we start a test-driven process at that exact moment and not later on when we start coding? And that was actually the question. And I think uh, BDD comes from that background as well. BDD stands for Behavior Driven Development. And it's not really something really new. It is what some people say, test driven development done right. Um, what you should do is really, uh, the focus was on preventing tests. The focus was, on, 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 was supposed to be on writing the, soft, uh, the right software. Um, and then Nord, when he wrote his article about introducing BDD, uh, he wrote about how he discovered that if in your test methods you use sentences, and if you would just replace the word test by the word shoot, that you would actually already end up with other tests, uh, better tests, because even that focus would change your focus uh, from testing and finding bugs to behavior and thinking what the software is supposed to do. And then he realized that the vocabulary you use in your tests that is actually very important. Uh, and so the template uh, was originated there when given when then uh, a template you use for writing specification. You start given a certain context, when you do certain action, then you expect a certain outcome. Uh, and the idea is to write your specifications, your test, your requirements in this way with this, test, uh, with this template. Um, the good thing is it, it forces you to focus on what the software really is supposed to do. But there's also another aspect which is good because you're starting to use a language, a ubiquitous language. Every board, uh, you have, you're using a very clear language. Uh, you're using very clear sentences, a very clear layout. You, uh, you're also encouraged to work, uh, to use examples. And because you write your specification this way, uh, you avoid misunderstandings. Uh, you get a language that all people involved understand. 
Um, so you have less risk of information loss instead of one person doing the analysis and giving the few documents to the developer and who's writing the code and will then pass it on to the tester. It's actually, you get a language that, that enables you to sit together and think about what the software has to do together. Um, and that's, you might have heard about the three amigos. That's actually the idea that uh, the business analysts, the developers, the testers, they all sit together to think from the beginning, to think about the requirements, about the specifications, and about what the software is to do. And having that ubiquitous language enables you to do, and, and uh, enables you to work this way. Another, yeah, one more advantage maybe of having such a language, if you start uh, uh, using such a domain spef specific language, that opens possibilities for automation again. And then we're back to a dream where you could press a button and the test would be generated, which is still a dream. But still, it brought us into contact with some tools that already existed. So uh, if you have a look at BDD, the first step is specifying your requirements using the given when then style. And in the second step, the goal is to make these specifications execu executable using a tool. Well, um, as you can see, there exists a lot of tools for doing this. However, there's no golden standard yet. So the question is which tool uh, to choose. Um, in the past two years, we have done a research project um, on which we um, made a list of all the existing BDD tools. Um, as you can see on the right side of the slide, uh, th this became a very long list. Um, so the thing that we did was we um, defined some criteria. Um, the two main criteria were uh, that there was activity on the tool uh, within one year, because there was a release the last year. Uh, and the second one was that the tool has to exist um, almost uh, three years or more, more times. Um, and then at the bottom, you can see, well, we focused on uh, Java BDD tools. Um, so the past two years, the list even became shorter. Well, so these were the tools that uh, matched the criteria, the activity and the maturity. And doing the research the last past two, two years, well, even um, some tools disappeared because they didn't match the criteria anymore. Uh, so like you can see, Genario, Fitness, uh, Twist, that were tools that um, disappeared from our list. Um, and in the last two years, also two other tools uh, became um, available. Well, Green Pepper is, uh, is um, well, he is coming with a new release, so we still are looking at it. And then uh, the first one, well, it's the new version for Twist, actually. And, well, we experienced with all the tools, so we did a lot of um, experiences, demo applications, even with a customer. Um, and, well, the question is, did we find a winner? Well, actually, the tool that you need to choose depends on a lot of factors, as you can see here on the slide. One of the um, fact, uh, factors is the involvement, involvement of the customer. Um, do you want that your customer also writes the specifications? Well, then you need to choose so, uh, some of the tools. Uh, other tools are less um, uh, available uh, for that. Another goal is, do you want to write acceptance testing or uh, unit testing, or even more focus on uh, UI-driven testing? That also is a factor that you uh, will need to handle um, to, to choose between the different uh, BDD tools. So the thing that we did was we saw a categorization of the tools. As you can see, you uh, see Cuc Cucumber and JBehave. Well, that are two tools that are um, made to write your specification in the given when then style. You can uh, use that style there. If you have a look at Concordian, um, well, the specifications are written in HTML. And uh, on the right side, you see the more Scala groovy uh, specific uh, BDD tools. You can also see Robot Framework. That's more specific when you want to use, uh, when you want to make, make UI tests. So that's Robot Framework. And then Serenity, um, it's a, a wrapper around uh, some tools which give you more nice uh, reporting. Um, in the next <coughs> uh, 20 minutes, I think, we will give a, de a demonstration on uh, three tools. We will use a simple demo application 
which uh, focuses on the calculation of the body mass index of patients. So the thing that people can do is they can register themselves, they give a social security number, their birth date, their gender, uh, and they also can give examination details. So you, they can say, well, at this moment, my length is that uh, and my, my weight is that. And then the, the body mass index can be calculated. Um, the scenario on which we will focus in the demos is the scenario where we um, want to show all the details of one specific uh, patient with that specific uh, social security number. So on the slide, you can uh, see um, the scenario with the given one dance, uh, which we will go into detail um, for some of the PDD tools. Uh, we're not going to do any real life coding. Uh, we were too scared to do that because we didn't want to anything to go wrong because there's not much time. So we just made a, a little screencasts uh, for each tool, which I'm going to try to lose to low. No. So the first tool we wanted to try was. I'm sorry. Ah, sorry. Okay, I can see. I have to change my display. Okay, can you see it? No, yeah. And that should be better. Um, so the first tool we're tr uh, trying to show you is Scala test. Scala test is one of, was on the third column, and that column was the tools who were using um, other languages, but also languages who could work with the Java vir virtual machine. So mostly Scala or Groovy. Um, that's not the only thing they had in common. They also had in common that their focus was more developer-centric, uh, while the other tools are sometimes more customer or business analyst-centric. Those are more developer-centric, which hopefully you will see in the coming uh, movies. Um, so I hope you can see it. When you just start. start, sorry, he's not starting. Okay, I'll see if I open it in the browser if this will go better. Sorry for this, I thought nothing would go wrong with this one, uh, way of working, but I was wrong. Yes, that's working better. So you see I'm working in uh, Eclipse now with a Scala plugin enabled, and I'm creating a Scala class. Which already, you can see this is already a Scala class, not a plain text class, but a Scala class. It's coding. Um, and the Scala class has to extend uh, what they call a feature spec. That means I'm telling Scala that I'm going to write features with scenarios and that they have to um, consider each scenario as one test. And then I'm uh, using the given when then trait, as I say, which say, um, you can use to use that given when then syntax. Uh, I can also choose for other types of uh, syntax, but here I choose for the given when then style. So I start writing a feature. I hope you can see it, the code. I'm writing a feature. Uh, I can add additional information. For instance, the narrative of the user story I can put here with those info lines. And then I have to start writing a scenario. So I can use a scenario keyword. I have to give the sentence or uh, generic um, title of the scenario. And then I can start adding my given when then statements. And so you'll see, I start with given. I should start with given. So I use the given keyword, and then I give the sentence, a patient with a certain security number, gender, and birth date. And then the patient had also has a length and a weight. And I have to make sure that patient is registered in the system, otherwise I won't be able to retrieve it. And then when, which is the actually thing I want to test, when I ask for the details of that patient, um, and then he should return all the information. So that is actually my scenario. That is the way, and that is what BDD is about. You try to explain, I'll pause it for a moment. You try to write your test this way. This is a little bit technical, but I mean, those are also sentences a customer can read and understand. And it's, 
It's very detailed, uh, it's formulated very detailed, so there should be no misunderstanding what this code is supposed to do. That is the whole point, that you're that detailed that everybody, whether it's a customer or the analyst or the developer or the tester, that they all have the same idea, that they all have the same expectations of the code. Uh, I write pending because I don't have any implementation for my test yet, but I can still normally, I should be able to uh, run it as a test, which I'm going to do now. So what is happening? Well, two things. Well, first of all, in the console, you can see that he actually, um, in the feedback he gives you, he, he shows the whole scenario, the whole user story. He shows it in plain text. So for a customer, this is already more readable. There's also a little bit of statistics about the tests. In my uh, Scala test window, I can see the output, which is more interesting for a developer, for, from a developer point of view. Again, you can see the user story, you can see the whole scenario. But the really nice thing about this tool is if I run it as a Maven build now, because that output in text was maybe readable for the customer, but not really fancy. But if I run my Maven build normally, he should show me. He should generate some HTML, which is of course then nicer to show to your customer or anybody else in the team, to all the stakeholders. So he's running the build, and then he should have generated an HTML file, which is here. And when I open it, then you can see it. So he will show you, he will create an HTML page contain, uh, containing all the information. So you can see here on the bottom the, the story I just made. You can see how many tests succeeded. Well, there's not much, of course, there's just one pending for now. But everybody involved, I mean, this is HTML, so you can just put it on a server that's accessible for everybody. So everybody can also see the status of your project, uh, which of course makes it a nice tool. and which, which improves the communication. If you want to see more about the story, you can click on the link and then you see the detailed scenario. And again, everybody can see this, the customer can see this, the customer can see where, how much you have tested, but can also see if there's something he doesn't agree with, when, uh, if you misunderstood something, everybody can see the information, so everybody can give the feedback as well. So this was a part of, of writing specification, but I haven't done much testing yet. So. That's, we have another movie for that one. Um, so here's my specification again. I said, ah, this was a test about showing personal details. The class I'm actually testing is this one, the person service Java API, which has a few um, methods. Uh, and the get person method is the one I'm testing, returns a person detail object. So that's the one I'm going to test. So what I'll do first, I'll create a variable containing a reference to my service object. Um, it is Scala, but I didn't know any Scala before I was doing this, and this, the learning curve is not that bad. As you can see, you can use Java classes. Um, here, just a class to quickly work with dates. And then I start implementing my steps. So I have my given step, and then I have to add code here to create a patient because I have to register patient first before I can ask for his details. So here I'm writing the code to create this patient. Uh, the next line here, I'm going to add some examination data, length, weight, and so on. Then in the next end, I have to make sure the patient is known to the system, so I have to add it to the system. And then I will call, in the when step, I will actually call the method which I want to test, um, and I will store the result in an object that details retrieved. And then if you look, and in the then steps, that's where you are going to, where you are going to do the verification. So here I'm going to write a search statement to see if the information I retrieved from my system is indeed what I expected. So that is where you're actually writing the real test now. So you still have to write some test code. Um, that is the bad news. But the good news is it's, it's, uh, you can combine it with more um, with uh, functional information, with logical information, with non-technical information, and you can create nice reports for your customer. I'm going to fast forward a bit because those asserts are really self-explanatory, I think. So I write all the assert statements normally. Then I have to check the body mass index as well. 
And at the end, I have to remove the pending line because now I wrote my implementation, so pending step should go. And then when I run my tests, then he really should execute it and show the result. And here you can see the test result, which is now green and nothing pending when one test succeeded. Uh, so this was a, just a very short little demo of Scala tests. Um, as you can see, you still have to write the test yourself, but it's from a different point of view. It's for a more functional point of view, which is what we liked about this tool. Um, next, Elke is going to show two other examples. Okay, so <clears throat> I will start with the Concordian. I will first open it. There's only 10 minutes left, we have done. Okay, so um, if you use a Concordion, you will write your specifications in an HTML file. So um, first of all, we will make um, the HTML uh, file. Well, if you use Concordion, um, the spec says that you need to do it in a, in a folder test specs, so not in the test resources or folder, but that you can change if you want. Um, so we make the HTML file. Um, we have the same example here, so you can see the narrative, you can see the acceptance criteria, so the first scenario with the given when dense. Um, and then we will um, make a Java class in which we will implement all the steps, so all the given when then steps. So we call it uh, show patient details uh, test. And here we need to uh, add some annotations so that it's a Concordian runner, so that it's not a plain JUnit uh, test that you will run, but a Concordian uh, test. Um, and you can, so that's the thing that uh, is done here. If we go back to the HTML, well, there you can see that we still add some, the then clause, the end clause. Um, I will forward a little bit because we are running out of time. Um, the main thing is this part, I think. Well, the thing is here, you in your HTML, you will make a link with um, the code that you are going to write in the show patient details uh, test. So here I'm specifying that the social security number um, is a parameter, so at, uh, yeah, hashtag uh, number. I do the same for uh, the gender and the birth date, so we can uh, use parameters here. And then um, in the P, in the paragraph, in the next step, I will, um, make um, an, 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 a method that will be executed. So I will still go forward a little bit. Yeah, I think I just uh, set all the, the parameters here. Um, so, sorry, um, the making executable. Can I open it faster than this? Mm. Can I just drop it perhaps? So here you can see that we uh, add in the paragraph of the given step also a Concordian uh, HTML tag, but the execute, and we will call a, an, a Java method, initiali initialize person details, um, at which we will pass all the parameters, so the social security number, uh, the gender, which is male, and the birth date um, that is given there in the specification. So the next step is that you implement uh, this method in the show patient details test. So that's the thing that's uh, been done here. So we, we make a method and it's just the same um, implementation like uh, has been done in the Scala test example. So I will go forward so you can see all the um, things are done. Then we run the uh, test. You just run it like a JUnit test but you get more um, information. Well, you get in the console, you see that you have null successes and null failures. Um, but if you go to the JUnit view, you can see a green um, mark. But the main thing is that you need to go to the HTML file, which you can find somewhere in a, in a folder. So that's the thing that I'm going to now. And there you can see, well, um, 
if you use asserts, that's not done yet, but I will show it in a moment. If you use asserts, then you can uh, color your HTML green or red, depending on whether your test uh, is succeeded or is failed. So this is the HTML. Well, in, the, in this case, the given step, it's only a execution, so um, it doesn't report anything, but the given step is now uh, executed, so that method is uh, executed. If we go forward, then you see here um, in, the con in the end step um, and in the then step, there is, an, there is an assert true. Yeah, is it true? Then you can see that in the HTML reporting, you can see that those steps are uh, colored green, so those are succeeded. And you also see in the console that there is a success of two uh, steps. I think that's uh, enough for um, Concordian. If we still have time, I will do um, cucumber. Okay. So if you use cucumber, well, the thing there is you just specify your uh, given when dance in a separate file, in a feature file. So we make a show patient details feature file. There you just write your given when dance, your um, scenarios. So that's something that your customer uh, can do or your business analysis uh, can do. Um, the thing then is if you have all your specifications here, you also make some Java classes. I won't go into details because we don't have time, but I will show you what Cucumber does. Well, if we now run uh, one of the Java classes, then uh, you can see that uh, in the console, a lot of steps are generated for you. So the thing that we did in Concordian was we uh, did, did it ourselves. We, did it, we, we needed to make all the methods ourselves um, in the given when dance here, based on your given when dance steps, the test methods are already uh, generated. So you can uh, copy paste them and you can implement them in your Java class. Uh, also in Cucumber, you have reporting, so you have an HTML um, file which you can have a look at. Here you can see that it's um, yellow, so meaning that it's not implemented. And it changes when we implement all the steps. Um, I think we will go to the conclusion, or sh shall I show the three last more step? Minutes, maybe quickly. So we have the the specifications written, now we want to implement them. So the thing that you do is uh, you make a, another um, Java file in which you implement uh, the steps. Well, we copy uh, the thing from the console to our Java class, and then we will implement all those steps, like done in the Scala test uh, demo. We will uh, implement it, we will run it again, um, you see that it's a green. It's not all green. Only the first given step here is a green. So that's, I think, an advantage of a cucumber because in Concordian it's all green. And if we uh, refresh the HTML uh, report again, then you can see um, that the given step is also colored green. Um, so that's, I think, the basic things from cucumber. We will go back to the slides. Yes. So those were very short demos, but I hope you saw, I mean, the different ways of working. When Scala test, we started with one file, uh, uh, everything, which contained everything. In Concordian, there was already separation of concerns. You had your logical point of view, your, your business point of view, and your HTML file, and then your developer point of view, and your test file. And Cucumber took it a step further, because they had a, a business point of view, a text file with, with just plain text. So nothing else, nothing you have to expect from your customer or your business business analysts, they don't need any technical knowledge, they can just focus on writing the specifications. Um, if you're more interested, if you'd like to play around with those tools yourself, there's actually a hands-on lab tomorrow morning, so then you can try, try it out yourself. Uh, maybe a very short conclusion at the end. Um, it's not about the tool, it's the whole thing about BDD. I mean, you showed you some tools, that was the point of a tool in action, of course, but BDD, of course, is value. It's not the tools, it's actually the way you express your specifications in this way, because it really leads to better specification, whether you automize it or uh, whether you make them executable or not. 
it's 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 a process itself of course which is important but the, the other question of a tool can help we think yes because um, you've seen all those tools I mean they're Comparable, comparable, comparable with other test tools like JUnit, but they have that extra um, documentation uh, reporting aspect, which improves your communication with your customer and which creates living documentation of a high quality if you um, use them. Uh, we said to be continued because um, we saw in the past few years how the landscape narrowed, how there was fewer and fewer tools remaining, but we still don't think there's a golden standard yet uh, who is the best tool. Uh, there is some tools definitely more popular than others, but we still think there's a lot of work to do there, that there's still a lot of uh, possibilities to explore in all those tools. So I will definitely look further into the... Um, subject. I don't know if there's any questions. I don't know if you have time. No, we don't have much time. Maybe. I don't know if there's any questions. Okay, thank you very much for your thank attention. You.